About a month ago, pictures leaked of what was allegedly an RTX 4090 Ti cooler. And if we go back and look at those pictures, yeah, they're very convincing. This is definitely some physical setup of metal that someone took a picture of, and on the silver bit, it says 4090 Ti. So, yeah, back then, a month ago, a lot of people pointed to this cooler leak as evidence of two things. First of all, look how chunky that boy is. It's more evidence that Lovelace consumes more energy than Ampere, as many people, including me, have been leaking for a while now. And number two, well, this Lovelace cooler is leaking earlier in the year than Ampere's did, right? Ampere's cooler leaked about a few months before it came out, so doesn't this mean that Lovelace has to be coming out in July instead of August or September? Well... Let's take a step back and talk about what I've already confirmed up until now. I've already had multiple sources of mine state that they are expecting or literally themselves working at a company preparing 4.5 slot coolers for Lovelace and that this was kind of going to be the expected standard for the flagship. And yeah, so if I've been told that and I've got another source telling me just recently actually that four slots are required for 600 watt cooling then isn't this cooler here? Look how thick it is. It has to be four slots, right? Well, that's actually the point of this video, is to assess how big that leaked engineering sample or whatever it was, RTX 4090 Ti cooler, actually was. Because at the end of the day, the final power usage for the flagship that can change, right? Right now, I'm sure NVIDIA is still testing various TDP and clock configurations and then just having a whole list of their options ready when they're 100% sure of how RDNA 3 will perform in both performance itself and efficiency. You see, if NVIDIA thinks they can tie or effectively win the crown even with ray tracing or be close, then it would make sense for them to push things to 600 watts if they believe their cooler that they're working on right now can cool that. Then again, if NVIDIA finds that there's just no way they're going to win performance, that they might be solidly behind AMD by at least 10%, then it wouldn't surprise me if NVIDIA decided to maybe not lose efficiency by that much. Maybe they say, oh, we're going to lose performance by 15% instead of 10% so that AMD doesn't completely blow us out of the water in both performance and efficiency because a clean sweep would be well, very embarrassing. But either way, I've been working in conjunction with a new rendering contact of mine to suss this out and get you guys some pictures early of what this thing looks like, just like I did with Alchemist. And through a lot of back and forth via email and some discussions, I think I actually have a pretty good idea of what that cooler is, how big it is, and it firms up some of the recent leaks about Lovelace, including the release date. So that's what I want to talk about today. This is a pretty fun video to work on with somebody else. What the Lovelace leaked cooler looks like, whether it's an engineering sample or what it really is, and some more details about when Lovelace launches. But first, an ad from a sponsor. Reese, what's wrong? He getting you down? No? You're paying too much for Windows keys. Well, come on, you know you don't have to do that by now. After all, it's certainly been no secret that CDKeyOffer.com has been a reliable sponsor of Moore's Law is Dead for years. They're the go-to place that I recommend my fans use for getting PlayStation, Microsoft Office, and Windows operating system keys for reasonable prices. You don't want to spend a ridiculous amount of the percentage of your build's price on a Windows operating system. Go to CDKeyOffer.com to get a legitimate, reliable key to build your new system without wasting too much money. I use them to make the Alder Lake system next to me for benchmarking graphics cards. And if I build a Zen 4 or Raptor Lake system this fall, you can bet I will be going to cdkeyoffer.com right away to get a reasonably priced Windows 11 key. If you do go to cdkeyoffer.com, make sure you use the offer code Broken Silicon to get 25% off Windows software and DieString to get 3% off everything else on the website. They even sell gaming chairs, mice, and keyboards right now. It's a good place to go to to get reasonably priced products and to also show your support for Moore's Law is Dead, go to cdkeyoffer.com today. All right, so let's look at these original pictures again. They do look very convincing, don't they? Well, 
After further analysis and really just staring at them for way too long, I started to notice some curious things. First of all, the placement of the RTX 4090 Ti name is in a different spot than on the 3090. So I'm not actually sure what that would mean, but I worked in manufacturing and automotive, and yeah, all the time a new generation of product or a new like vehicle would come out, and we would try to modify old tooling to make the updated parts for the new model year and you would avoid moving anything around you don't need to and i don't see why they would move where that's placed what that tells me is likely going on is honestly there's a chance someone just fiddled with 3090 coolers and made a convincing fake that is possible especially considering we only have a few odd angles but also, I think there's a very good chance this cooler we're looking at is just modified from the engineering sample coolers for Ampere. You see, the tooling that they would use to make the final 3090, 3080, 3070 coolers, the Founders Editions, that tooling would usually not be the exact same tooling they used for the early prototypes for validation and testing. They and NVIDIA would have worked with one of their manufacturing partners, the one that's ends up making the final coolers to use cheaper tooling that can't make thousands of units but maybe can make hundreds for in the meantime until they lock in the design and work on the final tooling that costs you know hundreds of thousands of dollars if not millions of dollars and so i'm wondering if what was used to cool these lovelace engineering samples was just some stuff modified from the prototype tooling for ampere that would make a ton of sense and in fact once my contacts started really looking at all the angles putting them into a software and rendering mock-ups we came to the conclusion that this thing looks almost exactly like a 3090. But now, that doesn't mean that there is necessarily going to be a different looking cooler for Lovelace. Uh, NVIDIA did use the same cooler between Kepler and Maxwell, and this cooler was pretty elaborate for Ampere and eye-catching and got really good reviews for how cool it were it looked and how well it worked for its size. So it would make a lot of sense that NVIDIA would want to stick with something they put a lot of effort into for a couple of generations. But I don't know, they had to have at least made this thing four slots, right? Well, upon further analysis, maybe not. My contact told me that once he again crunched the numbers, put together a mock-up based on the pictures, this thing was definitely not four slots. And looking at a mock-up he made of both a four slot and three slot version, I concurred. It doesn't look that thick in the leaked pictures. Now, perspective is tricky, but I don't know. To me, I was like, it has to be thicker than the Ampere cooler, right? Like, am I, I'm pretty good at spatial relations. It, maybe it's not four slots, but it has to be more. And then I noticed something about the 3090 cooler that I hadn't seen anyone else point out until now. The 3090 Founders Edition doesn't actually have a heat sink that takes up three slots. It actually only really goes to like 2.75, but it has three support brackets on the back for putting into your case very stably. So in other words... What I think we were looking at and what I proposed to my contact is that maybe all NVIDIA did is modify Ampere coolers or modify, I should say, modify the tooling to spit out some shrouds and heat sinks that are just 10%, 20% thicker, not four slots, but maybe just extending all the way to three slots or probably 3.25 slots. And when my contact did a mock-up of 3.25 slots, it looked exactly like it was the same opening as what we've seen on the vent on that leaked picture. And so that leads me to, well, this. This is the render. Not as exciting and different as a lot of you were probably hoping to see for the 4090 Ti engineering sample. But indeed, it looks like it is a 3 to 3.25 slot version of the cooler we have seen on the 3090. And so that really does lead me to say... NVIDIA is then just modifying Ampere tooling for the final Lovelace cards, or this was just a thrown together option for cooling Lovelace as an engineering sample, but not the final cooler. Now, this is when a lot of people would step in and go, wait a second, I thought your sources said that you need four slots to cool 600 watts, that this won't be enough. It won't be enough, right? Well, maybe it actually will be, because... If we look at the 3090 Ti, 
NVIDIA used the same cooler between the 3090 and the 3090 Ti, and they actually managed to do so while increasing power by 30% from 350 watts to 450 watts, and it actually had lower temps and fan speeds. So, I don't know. If a few tweaks, having to cool less memory chips, NVIDIA was able to add 30% more power to the 3090 and yet get lower temps and fan speeds in the same design, I don't see why making the heat sink about 10%, 20% thicker, not to four slots, but to three or 3.25 slots, it's a really, really high quality heat sink, it might be enough for 600 watts. And after all, Right now, all we know is this is for an engineering sample. NVIDIA would probably be happy to just have it have the fans run 30% higher than a 3090 Ti to cool 30% more energy with a thicker heat sink than what they had before. And, well, that is what I am sure is going on with at least that engineering sample. And because there is a serious chance this is just a thrown-together cooler for an engineering sample... This lines up better with Lovelace not having real availability until October, which I confirmed in the last Broken Silicon. Although, in fact, I do want to leak some direct quotes regarding that that I used for the basis of what I was saying in that episode. So, basically what it comes down to is this. Will NVIDIA pretend they are launching Lovelace in September or, I don't know, August? I don't know. They certainly could. But here's what I do know. I know that NVIDIA's partners are expecting Lovelace to have real availability in October. From their perspective, the paper launch date doesn't matter. They're interested in selling thousands, tens of thousands, and eventually hundreds of thousands of cards, and they don't expect to sell high volume of Lovelace until October. That's when NVIDIA is promising them they'll have the volume. Could they paper launch it in September? Sure. And could they announce it in late July or something? Absolutely, NVIDIA may do that. But at the end of the day, that's not when the real volume is. NVIDIA is going to have real Lovelace volume in October, right before RDNA 3 launches, just like they did with Ampere and RDNA 2, by the way. And a lot of this has to do with they just have way too much Ampere stock sitting around right now in warehouses. This comes from multiple sources. There's only so much I can say. But basically... There's a lot of excess Ampere stock lying around, and this is backed up by everybody. And so <laughs> the funny thing is, the less you guys buy right now, the quicker these prices are going to keep dropping. And I'm seeing 3090s get close to $1,000 already, but Lovelace isn't going to launch sooner unless people buy them up. So we're just going to have to wait for this inflection point where people go, fine, I'll buy a 3090. And I'll admit that I might consider buying a 3090 if it got below $1,000 eventually just to use it for work early before Lovelace comes out. But that's what it's going to take. NVIDIA has excess Ampere stock lying around. They are testing Lovelace, documenting numbers, and trying to be sure of what RDNA 3 is before they lock in final power usage. Will NVIDIA ultimately decide to cap the top Lovelace flagship that launches this year at only 450 or 500 watts instead of 600? I don't know. And I don't think NVIDIA is sure of that themselves yet either. What I do know is that they've told their partners to build coolers around bombs that are 600 watts. So that's basically the plan up until now still. We'll just see if they change that plan. And otherwise, all I can confirm is that engineering sample you saw, it just looks almost exactly like a 3090, but it's very likely been pushed to 3 to 3.25 slots. Could there be other engineering samples that are for slots? Maybe. Could they have a more elaborate Lovelace cooler coming that leaks a month before they reveal it, just like we saw with Ampere? Possibly. But that engineering sample, that was very similar to what Ampere's cooler looked like, just a bit thicker. And also do not forget the third option, that this is just a convincing fake made by somebody who either got access to some discarded prototype for an Ampere product or simply took a 3090 Ti cooler, machined a metal plate for where the die goes and a couple other things, and then etched in the 4090 Ti in a different location than where it's etched in on a 3090 Ti simply so they could take pictures from very specific angles that accentuate the size of the card and don't let you see the other identifying markings that would just tell you this is an Ampere cooler. In fact, I do find it weird that we don't have a picture of a 
black part of the shroud that should say RTX 4090 Ti, or again, is just a blank black part of the shroud because it's supposed to be an unidentified card. Why would we not get pictures of that part, but have pictures of a metal etching that says 4090 Ti? I find this very curious, but the good news is that I'm pretty sure upcoming leaks and a reveal from NVIDIA will tell us everything we need to know to declare if this early cooler leak was a dud, an engineering sample, or the first real indication that NVIDIA is using similar coolers for lovely. So keep your eyes peeled out there. And when it comes to looking at what else is coming out from NVIDIA, well, that'll just have to come in another video. I hope you enjoyed this one. It was a fun one I threw together working with a new person I'm hoping to bring on regularly to render things. We've got other cool things we've been working on as well in the background. So if you want to make sure you don't miss those upcoming videos, make sure you subscribe to the Moore's Laws Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button so you get notified when those videos come out. Also, consider supporting Moore's Laws Dead on Patreon. That's what pays for these types of projects to render these things and pays me, Dan, Gerard and hopefully an expanding group of people to bring content like this to you. We cannot do this without our patrons. And if you support us, you get early ad-free access to Broken Silicon, the ability to ask me and guest questions, access to the Discord, to talk with me and other like-minded people who I'm sure would love to discuss this video with you. You also get exclusive podcasts other people don't get. We just did an over one-hour discussion with a 6G expert going through wireless technology. It's a little off subject, so it's just there for patrons without any ads. There's a boatload of content out there for for you if you support us so please do if you have like an extra two dollars a month or something but uh otherwise as always thank you for watching <laughs>